Hi everybody and welcome back to part 11 of the Revel Flower Class build. This is the 144 scale kit. I've got a bit of a short week on the Corvette this week. There's a lot of other things going on. I've spent most of the beginning of the week uh, finishing off the Airfix Vulcan build behind me. Uh, and the last part of that part 11 was posted uh, a couple of nights ago. So if you want to take a look at the finished model uh, in a bit more detail, uh, you can go across to that video. But if you're here for ships, I'll be moving on a little bit with the flower class. I won't have much time. I've really basically got one afternoon this week to give me time to do the editing work uh, ready for Friday night. So I'll just carry on where I left off. I want to get the last pieces of structure on the bridge done and the two shields at the side of this front shield that I built in part 10. So with very little time at the bench this week, I'll get over there and we'll make a start on these side shields. This is the area that I'm going to be doing this afternoon. So we've got some platforms to build here that has uh, a davit and some signalling lights uh, on top. And we've also got some boxes to make that go on the inside. Uh, of the bridge structure. We already built some that went on the outside uh, railings of the bridge. I'm also going to build the base of the radar tower which is this structure here. I'm not going to be getting on to the actual radar lantern itself because I'm not quite sure how I'm going to glaze that yet so I won't have time to uh, work out and sort that out this week. So I'll just do the base uh, in this episode. I also mentioned um, a shield uh, that I was going to tackle this week and it's this one here, it's the shield that goes at the side of the Hedgehog Launcher, uh, this structure here. I won't actually build the Hedgehog uh, Launcher in this episode, that's because I want to dedicate a whole video to the main weapons on the ship, so that's the Hedgehog Launcher. Uh, the two main guns on the ship and the smaller uh, machine guns and Ehrlichans that uh, need to be fitted. So I'll do that all in one episode. I just want to do this shield uh, which will fit next to the shield arrangement that I built in the last episode which is this structure here. But uh, we'll start with these parts, get them made up and we're going to need some Revel plastic as well so we'll cut those out. I'm going to do these platforms uh, one at a time. Uh, that's because I think it might be easy to mix the parts up. So we'll uh, just take it in stages. We'll start with the underside of the main platform. So I just want to be a little bit cautious about this because as you can see that it's not a square uh, box that this part has to fold into. We have this angle on the corner so I want to make sure that I get the right bend in the right place. There's a little bit of an etching on the platform and that'll just show us where the bend needs to be. So just run around the angles until it matches the platform. You can see how it mirrors the shape. I'll just cut some little slugs of solder for this. I can just feel that that's not sitting in the groove properly and it's because there's the smallest little fret stub just on the top surface there it's just stopping it seating properly so that's better I'm not going to go all the way around with the solder doesn't need it we can just get a little bit into the corner doesn't matter about the appearance underneath we're not going to be able to see that so 
I'm not going to worry about it. You can see how little solder is needed to make uh, the join. I think one of the common mistakes I made early on when I was learning how to do this was just using far too much solder and that just led to uh, an awful lot of cleanup. So basically I'm just soldering each corner really, it doesn't uh, need any more than that. This is a small horseshoe tip, I think it's a millimetre. We might as well finish the job off and do this corner as well. So that's much stronger than trying to glue it. That's not to say that you can't glue it, it's just that if I was doing that way I'd make it up, paint it and put it straight on the model and then it runs less chance of getting damaged. Uh, so that's just the super glue is a lot weaker than soldering. Not to say you can't do it, um, but I'll always go for soldering now. If I think that I can do it successfully, I'll always choose soldering over gluing uh, with brass. It's just much, much stronger and more durable. And this is one of those parts that it's genuinely better in etched brass. It would be very difficult to produce anything as fine as that in plastic. Uh, and in fact Revel don't even bother to produce that part in the kit. Uh, this platform is just a very shallow moulding in the bridge. So there's nothing like that and certainly nothing that's hollow underneath. So uh, that adds a nice detail. Sitting on top of this platform on this side, the other side is a bit different, but this platform has the base for a lamp. I think it's probably a signalling lamp on it. So this needs to be folded up as well. This uh, stand for the lamp is probably getting towards the edge of what I'm currently capable of doing. But again, it's one of those parts that's going to be very difficult to get right by gluing it. So I will attempt to solder it. Well, that came out better than I'd hoped. Let's see if we can solder that uh, lamp pedestal onto the base. And some clean up with a fiberglass pencil. This is the lamp that we need for this pedestal. All we need is the actual lamp itself, not the base. Obviously we've just made the pedestal and we've got a piece of brass for the arms. While we've got it on its plastic pedestal, it just gives us something to hold to. Just take the uh, mould seam off the lamp don't want that on it and with that done just remove it from its plastic arm and this is the arm for the lamp which has a couple of folds on it I think the easiest thing to do would be to just glue the cradle onto the uh, top of the pedestal. 
then at least we'll have uh, a firm fix in to do the bends. For a bit of security I'm just going to glue the lamp base to the uh, pedestal as well. It's not strictly accurate but it will give us a good fix in for the parts. And once the lamp is fixed onto the pedestal, you can just adjust the little brackets on the side, get it nice and square. I've got the other one to make, which I'll do off camera, uh, but we've also got a little platform that goes next to the one that we've just made. This won't need soldering, it's solid enough as it is. Uh, this platform has a couple of pieces of equipment. We've got the Revel uh, lamp, which just needs one little piece of brass attaching to it, but it doesn't need modifying anyway. Just needs uh, a bit of a clean up. The lamp just fits directly onto the platform doesn't need any sort of modification at all. This platform uh, also has another piece which goes on the end. Uh, I'm not sure what it is, it looks like some sort of aerial, but uh, we have this turned brass part from the Pontos set. And uh, this small piece here which is the uh, aerial I'm assuming it is that goes on the top. So this has to be folded against itself. It uh, doubles the thickness of the brass effectively. I'd like to understand what that is. I'm not sure at all. But obviously it needs folding pretty carefully otherwise it's a delicate piece of brass and it will break. And the other thing to be careful of is not to remove the stub at the bottom. It looks like a, a piece of fret that should be removed, but actually it's a pivot. And Pontos have got a hole in this part for that to drop into. Like that. That just goes in a little hole. Uh, in the base. So uh, we'll do the, I'll do the other ones and then we can come back to the storage boxes that we need to uh, prepare for the bridge as well. Okay, I've built the second platform. You can see they're a mirror image of each other. Uh, but the one on the starboard side has a davit to go onto it here at the front is uh, this part. So this just has to be folded back on itself. I'll solder this together. The hook bends back as well so you get a double thickness of brass. With this I'll just put some flux on the inside at the top. It really just needs holding together very gently at the top. You don't need a lot of solder on that. But the important thing is to get the two halves of the brass lined up perfectly. And then just run a tiny amount of solder just onto the top edge. And that's more than enough to hold the part together. I don't need to bother with the hook. If I try and solder that I'll just flood all the details. So it's just enough just to pinch it together really tightly and it'll stay in place like that. Uh, this then drops down through a hole in the platform and we folded a little piece down at the underside just to locate it on the underneath. 
just like that. So I'll secure that with some extra thin or super thin CA. And that's that part done. So those are the two platforms finished and the two little steps with the signalling lamps on. Just to finish these lamps off there's a little bracket that goes just on the uh, pivot down there. I think it's actually a brace that goes onto the bulkhead at the side. It's really strange that that part went on straight away without any fuss. And yet this one on the other side it's taken ages for that brass to stick onto the plastic. It's one of the mysteries of brass and super glue that sometimes it just goes straight on without any trouble and you get it located first time. Uh, otherwise you end up like this where you're backwards and forwards it's sticking to the tweezers you're getting a right mess with it. We had 50-50 success rate there. So those are the four uh, platforms that we need for the bridge. We'll just look at the uh, storage boxes that we need as well. These boxes uh, are quite awkward to bend and that's because you can see the uh, etching of this sort of relief detail around the edge and the brass although it's got some fold lines on the inside that etching does cause a weakness so the brass can want to bend along the etching line rather than the bend line that's on the inside so you just have to be careful to get a really good grip on that and get the bend in the right place can see we've got the fold line on the inside but within a millimeter or so of that fold line we've got this etch line here so the brass wants to bend along there rather than the uh, fold line so we just want to make sure that we get right into that corner and bend the whole side down like that tight on the fold line and just bend the whole of the brass side up even then it's wanted to kink a little bit just flatten it out again get it all nicely squared up The lids have a couple of hinges on them, so we'll just fold those down. It'll just help us uh, locate the part rather than trying to bend the hinges afterwards. So put the lid on, got the hinges at the back. And then when it's roughly into place, I'll make sure there's plenty of glue on the inside. And again, squirt of accelerator and there's plenty of glue in there to hold all that together. Once it's in place just uh, bend the hin hinges down a little bit. It's the pair of uh, boxes. These next three actually they've got some fast bends on them so they're actually perforated it's just to make sure that the uh, box bends where it needs to bend so that's helpful it would have been good if those other lockers had have had the same uh, fast bends on them it just uh, makes sure that the brass is going to bend where it needs to as I've got the soldering iron out I may as well just 
seal these up. There are some little brackets at the bottom of those but I'll just make the th three boxes up first. These are the brackets for these uh, storage boxes. I'm not going to try and solder those so they're going to just be glued onto the underside. There are some slots in the underside of the boxes for those so that helps a little bit to locate them but there's not much to hold those parts so I'll have to be gentle with them. So that's all the parts for the bridge itself uh, but I also want to do the radar tower is this part here. So we'll get that folded up and soldered. This will be easier if I tape it up. Just make sure that we get it uh, nice and tight and square. Sometimes I take these things together and I forget which is the corner that we've got to solder. Okay, so that's nice and square. And I think I'll put the door on now, it'll save me doing it any later. I might as well solder it on. This looks as though it's got a number of handles on it, but I'll make sure that the door's secure before I do any of that work with the handles. So that's just fixed in place from the inside. The handles on this door will be the last thing I do. I've got to put the platform on top. But if I put the handles on now, they'll just get broken off, so I'm going to leave them. And we're going to have to make sure that the top of the base piece here is flat. That fits into some uh, grooves. There's a mark on the underside of this platform to locate the base piece. To fix that, I think I'm going to solder it. So I'll have to be, I should be able to reach down onto the inside of this and get a fixing into the corners. This tip's just not quite long enough to reach down to the bottom. I can't reach down there so I'm going to have to very carefully put some solder on the outside and just be careful not to get any in the holes. And none of the holes are blocked up so that's that's good. That's all right, I'm not going to do any more than that. This uh, upper platform has got some uh, little flanges on the edge, which we're going to have to bend down. And for this, I'm going to use the broader tipped uh, pliers. These are still Tamiya's etching bending pliers, but They've just got that broad tip on them so you can bend pieces like that. Obviously I can't get 
the pliers in to bend sideways because it's catching the bend just below it so we have to come in from the front like that and bend up but uh, these pliers are broad enough on the nose to be able to do that now there is a mark for a ladder here on this platform so I need to orientate that in the right position so it goes if the doors on the front face here the ladder comes up on this angle here so let's get that in with some super glue I think should hold it if we just put some in the center like that just check again about the ladder position so I'm gonna to have to uh, it's getting very cold and very dark as you can see in the shed so I'm just gonna to have to put the heating on my hands are getting a bit cold so apologies uh, if you can hear a fan in the background but I've got to stay warm otherwise uh, my fingers don't work. We have some braces, little angle brackets to fit on the underside of this uh, radar tower so we'll get those done next. These uh, braces have got a very small fold line at the back you just see the fold line and it's got a bit of rivet detail on it so they'll each need to be bent and actually they're quite useful those bends because it just gives us a bit more gluing surface for the bracket when we come to fit it to the underside of these platforms so that's uh, helpful I'll get the rest of the folds done then we can get all the brackets fitted together so we can get those attached now so I'll just get a bit of glue on the bracket at the back where we bent it and a touch on the bottom as well I don't want too much it doesn't need a lot of glue to secure these parts braces fit here uh, and sort of lock between the bulkhead here and this little flange that we've folded so they're a fairly secure fit So that's the underside of the tower. I think I can put the railings around this as well now because uh, the actual lantern fits on the top. Uh, but I'd like to be able to paint this whole lower assembly in one, including the railings. So I will put them on now. I'll just have to be careful not to catch them otherwise obviously they'll get damaged so rather than bend this up to start with I'll just fix the stanchions one by one and then do the next bends and as we uh, work around the assembly should stiffen up a little bit should become easier and just put a spot of glue on the bottom of each stanchion as we work around
and hopefully uh, this last section should join up so if we just took that in like that so I can just drop some super thin super glue in there and the last job is to fit these horrible latches on the door I must say I'm not looking forward to this they are very small so uh, I've got the camera on maximum magnification there and I don't know if you can see that Pontos expect us to fit eight of those I'm not sure it'll matter that much if we don't manage to fit those I'm trying to just get an angle on it for you to see oh there we are they are so tiny that they're pretty insignificant but let's give it a go let's see if we can fit them so you might just be able to see that in position here we've got eight of those to fit so uh, maybe some time these latches are a bit of a nightmare really they're so small and getting them positioned is pretty difficult and getting them to actually stand up as they're meant to do is even more difficult so those are the latches after an awful lot of fiddling around with them uh, I'm not absolutely certain that they're in exactly the right place but uh, it's very difficult to see before the parts primed uh, once they're in a coat of primer it'll be easier to see if any of them just need a little bit of adjustment and the primer will just fix them in place a little bit as well uh, but until then I'm not going to do any more with them so we've got to be uh, very careful with this now it's so obviously with the railings and those little door latches it's quite vulnerable really but I will fit the ladder at the back there's actually quite a good fixing for that ladder because there are a couple of slots in the platform and also this side flange so it holds it in quite nicely but I'm going to put that down now out of the way and let that set up I won't be happy until that's in primer actually it's very fragile so the last thing for this session is to do the shield at the side of the hedgehog uh, that's in brass and I think it's going to need soldering so that'll be the last bit of soldering for today so we'll cut the parts out and see what we've got to do so uh, quite a few bends on this part but I think it's uh, fairly straightforward we'll see how we get on with it so I'm just uh, trying to work out how this one goes we have basically a platform down at the bottom and eventually this swings forward it's probably easier to show than describe so it's uh, basically a shield with this little raised platform behind it and this 
panel at the side here just folds in at a bit of an angle and onto the top we can see by the little etch mark in the top there that that's the correct angle for this part so uh, that's how it all goes together but I will solder that because it's a little bit flimsy and there isn't actually a slot for this base part so it'll just help if we can get a bit of solder onto the underside there just to lock it all in position all good it's gone together well actually that part so uh, quite a bit easier than I thought it was going to be see the edge profile there is angled and that's just to meet the rise of the deck this goes right on the deck edge with the hedgehog launcher just inside it so uh, we just have to have that uh, angle on as I say for the slope of the deck we have a couple of uh, braces to fit on the inside now and I'll glue these in They're actually just a little bit tall. I'm going to take a tiny bit off the top of that. Otherwise we're going to have the uh, brace sticking up above the line of the shield, which I don't want. do the same with that just a fraction a quarter of a millimeter that's all it is and then as usual I'll just reinforce those with a bit of the super thin super glue and that's uh, just enough the last thing is this railing which the middle stanchion here fits on the corner of this little platform this end stanchion fits onto the revel deck when we come to fit it to the ship and the front edge here just butts up against this angle So uh, the main fixing for the part will be this strip here at the end. Just get a bit of super thin at the back of that. So that's the hedgehog shield all done. So those are all the parts that I'm going to be using this uh, episode. Uh, it doesn't look much but there's an afternoon's work there which as I said at the beginning that's all I've got time to do this week. But they need uh, priming, painting and then we'll go over to the model and fit them to the ship. Okay, so that's everything uh, painted up in the primer and white. 
I just want to do a little bit of detail painting on the lamps, pick those out in black uh, and paint the lenses in as well. So before we fit them to the ship, I'll get that done. Okay, so that's all the parts we need, so uh, let's get over to the ship and get them fitted. Okay, we'll start to fit the bridge parts. And for this I'm going to be using some uh, MIG Ultra Glue. It's the safest glue to use in these uh, applications. Uh, and that's because it's washable really, so if we get any glue on the uh, decks or anything like that, this will wash off. As you can see, I've run out of gloves. So I've got paint all over my hands. The difficult thing with these platforms is being able to get enough glue on these very thin legs. So I'm just going for a location that's tucked out of the way. Hopefully we won't be able to see the glue when the parts are fitted and it does dry transparent as well so that's a help. The MIG Ultra does take quite a while to set. I wouldn't touch this for a couple of hours uh, but once it is set it's quite strong. Can glue these boxes straight onto the screen at the back. And I can get away with some super glue for those. The last part to fit is the uh, radar tower. And again, the difficulty with this is to find a location point for it. It's just thin brass at the bottom. So one trick that I came across when I was doing the hood was to use some styrene strip just to add some glue blocks to the underside. So that's what I'll do in this case. Put the styrene strip. This is about uh, one and a half by probably one millimeter strip and just get it flush with the bottom of the bulkhead. It doesn't have to be all the way around, just two faces will be enough. And those two glue blocks give us something to put some uh, super glue onto. This tower only fits one way. So because I've used quite a lot of the MIG Ultra on this assembly uh, I'm not going to be able to move it around. One of the parts has come loose there as you can see. It will take a couple of hours until that's in a position where it's not going to move anymore. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I've just got one of these lockers to fit on the port side and as I was painting it I dropped it 
and I haven't located it yet so uh, I'll just have to catch up with that uh, next time but just for an afternoon's work that's not too bad progress okay all done uh, for this week or this afternoon I've just had uh, this afternoon to make some modest progress but it's uh, progress nevertheless uh, and every bit fitted is one less as they say uh, but I've had quite a lot of time out this week finishing the Vulcan build, which uh, you've probably seen earlier on in the week. And also I've been getting ready, uh, assembling all the bits and pieces I need for the next aircraft build following the Vulcan, which I'll talk about in a preview video uh, over the weekend, once we've got uh, this week's Corvette build sorted out. One thing that you saw me build was the Hedgehog Shield, but when I came to try and fit it to the model, uh, it's going to need altering a little bit because it doesn't fit straight out of the box. I'll need to do a little bit of work on that to make sure that that's going to fit as I want it to. So it's just positioned on the model at the moment. But apart from the Ehrlichan guns on the bridge wings and the actual frames on the bridge wings supporting the bridge, uh, that's the bridge more or less finished I think and I can now do some other parts of the ship. I'll probably move uh, aft and get some of the detail done uh, on this skylight and probably the platform for this rear gun as well. I've also got several bits and pieces to fit uh, that I made up when I built this rear structure. So I'll hopefully get all that done uh, in part 12, make a little bit more progress. I don't think that this build will actually take that much longer. I'm intending to try and get the finish of the Corvette in 20 episodes and we're already uh, on 11. So we're just over halfway probably. And it might even be uh, less than that. At which time I'm going to have to think about what the next uh, maritime build will be. So I'll get all that work done in the next episode and that will be coming up as usual on Friday. And as I said, in the meantime, we'll get the preview video done on the next aircraft build uh, and also talk about another little project that I'm intending to embark on, uh, also involving aircraft uh, over the next few months. So I hope you can join me for one of those uh, new videos coming up in the next few days. In the meantime, look after yourselves, everybody. Enjoy your modelling uh, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.